If you missed my last video, I removed the engine in this 2009 Subaru Forester. We have the engine sitting right over here, and it's the same day that I recorded the last part of the last video, so we're going to get the new engine broken out and get installing. All right, we got the new engine out of what is called the plastic pot, apparently, as you can see by this, but we're going to take off the plastic, we're going to open up the cardboard box, get her all undone, and then, I mean, look, you can just see how much shinier this thing is. 14 years really That's ages an engine. It does when it causes corrosion and everything, so beautiful stuff so we took the little coolant tube whatever it's called I don't know off the top coolant bolted thing. it onto the next one came with the gaskets already pre-installed so it's just a simple matter of putting that down and it's good to go yeah we're gonna start getting everything off timing belt cover side valve covers all that all the gaskets and everything are in here so that'll be fun to throw on and slowly but surely everything's gonna start to come together all right, we're currently taking off the valve cover gaskets, or not valve cover gaskets, valve covers, sorry. I keep on saying gaskets every time because the Explorer's a leak, and that's what I think of, but anyways, we're taking those off. We're going to start throwing those on the side. We got some of the screws out of the front, little timing belt cover, and uh, yeah. Here in the Ram, going to the auto parts store real quick, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're going to head out, run to the auto parts store, grab some new spark plugs, grab some new uh, coil, coolant. Uh, I think that's about it. Serpentine what else did belt. I see? Yeah, serpentine belts, radiator hoses, all that good stuff. Well, we are back, and we got all kinds of gooding. We got uh, new belts, spark plugs, coolant, hoses, oil, all that good stuff, and then a harmonic balancer puller for when we go to take out the uh, final pulley from the old engine and throw it onto the new ones, so that'll be good. We're going to throw on the spark plugs now and then get the valve covers on. I already got my new valve cover gasket here. Got the valve covers here. I just threw in new spark plugs, had to use the extension. I used the torque wrench, torqued them down to 20 foot pounds. Bro, anyways, gonna put on the valve cover gasket, valve cover, do the same thing on the other side. Nathaniel's getting the valve cover off of that one. And Colby's, uh, what are we looking at here? Back piece for emissions, I think. I yeah. It is anyway. that or a water jacket? Yeah, there are a couple small pieces that we're not 100% sure what exactly they are, but we're just, yeah, we're putting them one for one from one engine to the other. All right, so we got the valve cover on that side. I'm going to get working on the valve cover on the other side. Colby's getting a few little odds and ends, the hoses, the sensors, all that good stuff. Uh, you can see that we got the back part of the guard already on here. I don't know if, I guess it did come with that engine because it looks brand new as well, but he's getting that out right now, and then we'll throw that onto this one, which I find it interesting that it comes with this little brass piece already on it. But not some other parts. I don't know. We'll just keep on moving. We're working on getting this little bad boy out right here. Got the big bolt out from the center. Impacted out without a problem. We have the harmonic balancer pulley that I just purchased from Advance Auto Parts. So we're going to use that in an effort to pop that sucker out. Hopefully with ease. Nathaniel and Tyler ran out to go grab something to eat while Colby and I are still working here on the engine. Uh, like I said, I was going to work on getting the harmonic balancer out, which you can see is out right now. Uh, Colby's putting on the timing belt cover, which was covered up by this, and that's why we didn't have it off earlier. But it was pretty funny, because uh, I started to set up my tool and everything. Like you can see, I just bought it and everything, cut it open. It Start really came out by itself. Yeah, exactly. I was starting to seat it on properly, and before I even did that, I said, this thing's kind of loose. I wiggle it a good bit. It took a little bit of wiggling and finagling, but it did come clean off. So that's off now. Colby's getting the timing belt cover on. We're going to get the whole thing on there and then throw this, this on over top. Because there's a lip in here. So you have this lip. And that sits behind this one. So I should have done that before, but I didn't know because we didn't have that one off yet. Crap, that's loud. But um, yeah, that's what we're in the process of doing now. Yeah, if you didn't hear what Colby just said, that one's got to be put on second, the bigger one first. Taking off the flex plate now, there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts on the back. They are 14 millimeters, and Colby's taking that off. Throw that onto the other engine and proceed onwards. One of the reasons that Tyler and Nathaniel actually run out, or ran out, sorry was because this uh, bolt on the bottom of the valve cover gasket, or valve cover, I keep saying valve cover gasket, but the bottom of the valve cover, it's a little stripped out as you can see. So we're going to see if we can find anything comparable that'll fit. Uh, they're out at the hardware store right now, and then hopefully we'll find something. If not, the plan will be to grind out what's left right there, put on the new one, or put it on the new one, sorry, and then secure everything that we can. There's the flex plate, but we'll leave that hole open probably get everything back on, and then put that one in last. I found some online that I can order if they can't find anything that fits. So in the meantime, putting that on the new engine and swapping over part after part. So with the way that the engine is sitting in the plastic pod, we can't exactly put on the flex plate right now. So he's trying to work. Yeah. And then uh, we can get the oil panel and 
Yeah, yeah exactly what Fred we just said. I don't really want to do this, show them this. So if you ever order something like this and it's sitting like that, you can see the oil pan. That's actually that's the sump for the oil pump. So you never want to try and move this, like is what we were trying to do, because if that does happen and that breaks, you're screwed. Yeah. So just leave it. When you hoist it up, you can worry about it, and then in the meantime, we'll just put all these in here so we don't lose them. But we're making sure when this engine comes up, it is going straight up, because obviously you don't want to snap that off. You can see the pan on the other one. We just got to put that on, and we have all the gaskets and everything. I'm working on getting these studs out for the time being. I'm using a pair of channel lock pliers and just twisting it in a counterclockwise direction. So slowly but surely, they're working their way out. We'll throw them in the new engine, and then probably maybe get this one lifted up, get some parts off. I don't know. We'll see. We might lift this one, strip it for parts, and then lift this one, put them on, and then... It's getting late. Yeah, it is starting to get late. I want to try to get this in by the end of the night. I don't know if that'll happen, but if not, hopefully by the end of tomorrow. So we will see. Moving forward, we got the harmonic balancer, crank pulley on there. I'm going to torque it down. Uh, we got the little coolant stub right there. Covers the thermostat as well, so that's off the old one onto the new one. I think that's going to be about all that we can do with the old engine for now, so we're going to lift it up, strip off the bottom for parts. Still working on getting bolts for this valve cover right here. So I'm going to have to order those online since the dealership's closed now. And, uh, yeah, I'll get those ordered. Get off the old ones, put on what we can, and then keep on keeping on. We have lifted the engine back up. We were moving out the old oil pan down here, so taking those out. It's a bunch of 10 millimeters, right? Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of 10s. Slowly removing that, popping them out one by one, and then we'll drop it off and put it on the new engine. We just took off the oil pan. It took a lot more prying than I figured it would, but it is off. We're going to try to grind out this little screw that's holding in the valve cover. I've just ordered some new ones online, so they should be coming shortly. And then aside from that, we got to get off the motor mounts, and then we'll be good to go to start putting it on here, and then maybe get this one in. I don't know. Sun's starting to go down. So you'll notice that unlike in my last video, it's uh, very dark out because we spent probably 50 years on this earth trying to get out this valve cover. So uh, we finally got it out. We had to take the old bolt head, we had to grind it down, we got the washer end out, we got a little bit ground down right there, so we're going to probably make that flush. And uh, this is the part that was stuck inside of it. We kept on hitting it, it wouldn't come out, it's pretty good, pretty solid stuck in there, so I drilled a hole through it, and then whacked that with a flathead screwdriver, which... Um, is literally our last resort option. Yeah, I was going to say, that was our last resort option, except for buying a new valve cover. Um, yeah, it, it seems like a quick little three minute process in the video. We probably spent an hour trying to get this thing off. So now that it's off, this is out and we can finally move forward. I'm probably going to get these ones secured at the bottom. So like I said, I'll get this about even, sand it down, and then we'll get to installing that. But in the meantime, I got new spark plugs in the new block. Life is good. All right, <laughs> old engine sitting here back on the tire. We're just getting things cleaned up for the night. We're going to hit it again tomorrow and then be good to go then. Back again on another day. It is Sunday today. I'm going to get started on some engine work. Old block is still sitting here. New one is sitting right here. We got a lot of the stuff from the old one onto the new one yesterday. Uh, today's goal is to have this ready to be put in, if not put in. I want to be done with the cherry picker by the end of the day, so I'm going to see what it takes. Uh, get the valve cover on, oil pan on, and there's a couple little small electronic odds and ends. Little sensors and things here. I think we need to do those first and throw this on the other side and just keep progressing from there so slowly but surely you can see we've got all the electronic connections over here popping them off the old ones going one for one just make sure that we have everything noticing some small stuff here like this bracket down here needs to be moved over and whatnot and you can see there's still some small things to be done but one by one everything's getting moved over i'm going to start with what's right here and get that on the new block so i got these two on as you can see i had to take off this bottom one first because this covers the bolt down here I had to unscrew that, so then I was able to use a socket wrench on that. I used an open end right there, and then once I had this off, it pulled out and back kind of. Kind of wedges into there, sensor pushes into there. And then I took this one off here, pried a screwdriver in here, popped it clean out. So that came out pretty easily. You can see the holes where it came from before. There was a plug on this engine before, and basically the way that I'm doing it is wherever I see a red little plug, Similar to this one, I know that there's something that's got to come off of there to go into here. And then I'm looking around, it's pretty much a big game of spot the difference. For example, you see the bracket down here, you don't see it on there, there I go, I need to put it on there. So, slowly but surely coming along. I have the valve cover over here. Now you can see, like I was saying, it's better in the daylight now. To get out of that one bolt, we had to grind down here, so it's a little uneven. I don't want to have it on an angle when it goes in, so I'm going to try to grind this flat. Maybe file it down a little bit and get it flat. 
since it's going to be a flat area and it just pushes against here with the outside even external force and it's not directly pulling there and the gasket's up on the lip there, it's going to be safe to do that as long as there's enough pressure going on here. So I want to make sure that's clean and good so then it sits flush and then I'll put it on there. I have some more bolts ordered in the mail because you can see that we have four here. There were a couple that were unusable, so I'm going to put in what we have. I got three or four more coming, like I did say. Here's the other one. You can see these ones are a bit rounded at the end, and one of them was completely drilled out, as we had to do. So throw these five in, hand tighten the two at the top. We're not going to fill it with oil yet, obviously, but at least to do that to keep us going for now. So we'll do what we can, throw in the new gasket, and keep it going. Valve cover is now on. You can see we got the bottom two in here, and then we got this one right here with a washer, so it'll sit flush against here. The reason we put the washer in here after grinding this down is because it does have this little neck right here, and we don't want the neck pulling against it, because once it hits the actual block itself, it won't be able to go in all the way. It would sit further out rather than backing in all the way. So if it's got the washer here, it should have the proper spacing to go in, because that's a little more than we grinded down. So we'll put that in now, tighten it down, uh, thread in what we can up here by hand, maybe tighten it down with the tool a little bit just so we can loosen it off, because i got three new ones coming. I'm going to put all three new ones up top, and I... I think we'll be good to start putting on motor mounts, oil pan, uh, spark plugs in here afterwards. We have the actual spark plugs in, just want to put in the tubes, and then we shall proceed onwards. So we have the old oil pan here. I got a new gasket for it, as you can see right in that package right there. I got a razor blade. The old one had kind of a little, I guess, squeeze-on type gel gasket, whatever, that seals into place. I'm not a huge fan of those, and I found one that was custom fit to it, a Felpro branded one, so I picked that up in Advance Auto Parts. I'm going to get that on, and then... Tyler's going to work on getting on the bracket, this bracket down here, and then move it over to that one. So, I'm going to keep on going. Throwing the spark plug tubes, wires that go into here. With the razor blade, some acetone, a right angle drill, and a little sanding pad. I was able to get this just about flush right here. So, we're going to wash this off a little bit because you can see how much crap is coating the inside. Obviously, you don't want that circulating up through your engine. Uh, we'll clean that off, probably air dry it with a little pressure air washer right there, and then get that installed. The valve cover is on, the spark plugs and spark wires are in, hanging over right now. We're going to get this one ready to lift up. We double checked and we should have everything off of that block onto this. Anyways, uh, walking inside, we have the oil pan. You can see I cleaned that out. Sand it down pretty smooth here, washed it all off, should be good to go. I have a new little seal to put in here. You can see that this one was all cracked, so this new one's going to go in. And I made sure that I washed it out with soap and water, and then I made sure that that was dry, 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 dry before it went back together. Because you want no water in your gas or oil components or anything, so it's clean. It's going to go on when we lift it up, and I have the gasket to put on with it, so let's get it lifted up. We are now getting the old engine lifted up. We put the bolts in about the same spot as we did before. We're going to, here, hold on one second, position it, get it lifted up, and start throwing stuff on. We've secured the flex plate. All eight bolts are in place. We put this little washer on the outside right here, and then all eight bolts here, like I had said. We torqued them all down to 75 foot-pounds. It is on. It is nice and tight, and we're going to go on to the bottom. Put on the oil pan. I have my gasket here that I bought right there. It'll go right on to the actual oil pan that I sanded down, and then once it's on there, tighten it down. Throw on the motor mounts and get her carried over and dropped into the engine bay. It has gotten dark out once again, but we got the oil pan on. Screwed it on, bolted it on, got the little stem up here, bolted down. Bolts in right there where you can see it. So that's in there. Um, I don't know what the torque spec is for the actual oil pan, but it's on pretty tight right now. Um, I don't want to strip it out because it is aluminum and aluminum does strip pretty easily. But we're going to get the motor mounts on and then we'll get it headed over and land it in the car. Motor mounts are going on, here they are. Got your two holes right here, they line up that threaded hole right there, that threaded hole right there on both sides, kind of throw them on now. Well, here she is being spotlighted by the Milwaukee light up there. New block has everything on it, at least as far as we're aware, it's got everything on it. Oil pan, motor mounts, everything underneath, thermostat, housing, valve covers, spark plugs, what more can you ask for? So, we're gonna wheel it over, we're going to drop it in. We're going to try to get the bell housing bolts done tonight, the torque converter, the flex plate bolts in, and then see where we can go from here. Motor mounts as well. My goal is to be done, like I said, with this by the end of the night, get the cherry picker return of the friend that I'm borrowing from, and here lies the old block. Maybe throw that one in the plastic pod, get it covered, get cleaned up, get to work tomorrow, and then get back onto this whenever we have the chance.
New engine is still being supported, but it is landed in as you saw by the time lapse. We're trying to get in the bell housing bolts in the back. I'm trying to get those ones in because we had to crawl underneath to get them. And there's a jack underneath right now, which will make it a little tricky to get underneath. Anyways, you can kind of see on this side that I got one in down there and then one in up there. I'm going to try to thread on the nut on the very bottom and then hopefully tighten it all together at the very end. But slowly but surely it's coming together. Slowly but surely. It took a big fight, but we finally got the engine lined up with the motor mounts. So it is on top of there. The threads are through the holes in the cross member, which means that I should be able to take pressure off of this like I will now. The whole car just sank down, as you saw. Tension off of there. Didn't collapse or anything. And I should be able to take tension off the transmission, and it should come out just fine. So twisting the handle here, checking at the bottom, and you can see the jack is flat. So she is in there now. All the bolts in the bell housing are now in. We're just getting them tightened down, torqued down and everything. Got all of them on each side, except for the one with the starter up there. So we'll get that one in as well, since it holds in the starter bracket and ground strap. Uh, once that's in, we're gonna work on the torque converter. You can see right now we have it perfectly lined up. We just so happen to get that just right. So I'm very happy about that. I've seen online that most people tighten that down to about 18 to 20 foot pounds of torque. So that's what I'm gonna go with there. Rotate it down here, like the same way I did when I took it off initially. Just Put on a 22 millimeter socket, socket wrench, crank it, crank it, crank it. Put on all three after I do the first one, and then it'll be good to go. The new engine's in. We put in the bolts for the torque converter, so they're being held onto the flex plate now, so that is all secured. I secured up the starter in the back. We're going to throw the hood on and call it a night because it is, what time is it? 9.30 now, and we all have to be at work in like eight hours, so it's uh, we're not even home yet. It's been a late night so far, but... We made the progress that I wanted to get done before the night ended, so I'm satisfied with it. I'm gonna throw on the hood, show you how I do that in a second, and probably not even put on the struts, just put it on just to have it covered, so. Yeah. Hood's mounted back up, two 12 millimeter bolts on either side. Struts are back on, two 10 millimeter bolts on each side. It should close cleanly. Money. And that's the night, so we're gonna get cleaned up. Uh, that's the last we need of the cherry picker, hopefully. I'm um, going to keep on going from here on out, get things secured, intake on another day, and hopefully get it running surely and shortly. So that's it for tonight's work. It is set to rain soon for the next three, four days or so, so I wanted to get some work done on the Subaru. Today is March 22nd, and I'm going to get working on the intake today. Here she sits once more, and to get her cleaned up a little bit, I got some throttle body and air intake cleaner that I'm going to use for the actual metal components, and then for the plastic, if there's any oil in there, I'm going to hit it with a Pro Strength degreaser. Got these both from Advanced Auto Parts, and I also got some rags so that I can wipe out everything on the inside just in case anything looks dirty. I haven't taken too much of a look at it, but let's see what we're looking at. Now here is the actual aluminum intake manifold. Here's all the plastic housing, the actual box that mounts onto the back there, and then your air box right here that's got your filter in it. I have a new filter, I'll put that on, and I'm gonna double check everything else, but I'll pop this out real quick. And I have my manifold flipped upside down right here. The old gaskets are still attached, as you can see. I'm trying to peel them off here. I have new ones that came with a kit that I'm going to install when I put it on, so peeling these ones off, and you can see that quite a bit of oil has gone down in there. It's hard to see because it's black in there, but that's really all the oil oil caked up in there. If I rub my finger in here and you see me pull it out, you can see just how badly that needs to be cleaned. So I'm definitely going to clean that out. Uh, it's worse in there than I thought it would be, but it's nothing I can't do. So take that off. I'll scrub off everything else here. I'll probably get a putty knife, razor blade, scrape that off right there. Obviously you want your new gasket sitting as sealed as possible. So I'm going to make sure that happens. Once I get that sealed, I'm going to make sure everything looks good. Uh, injectors are popped out here, but I'll get them back in because they're still in right here as you can see uh, Like I said scrub it out got both my degreaser and my air intake cleaner So I'll hit it with a little bit of that Spray it scrub it whatever and let me look at the other side too Doesn't seem too bad in there, so I'll start with this I just wanted to show this off real quick. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but There you go. Look at that difference. See that silver spot right there? It's hard to see the light, but night and day difference right there. So using right now my throttle and air body or throttle body and air intake cleaner, using that scrubbing what I can. And then, I mean, it's a difference. All right. I've already burned through an entire bottle of manifold cleaner and you can see that it is still pretty dirty inside. So it looks like I'm going to have to go run and pick up some more. I was hoping I wouldn't need any more because the sunlight's already coming pretty quickly and I don't want to have to be in and out and in and out while the sun's going down. But 
I have some degreaser sprayed on the inside of here, this part of the intake. Uh, just gonna wipe it down, scrub it out, get all the oil out of there because you can see there's a bit of oily residue at the bottom. And then I'll clean out the rest of the air hoses and air intake box. You can see I'm using this because it says it is safe on paint and plastic, so should get the job done, should get that cleared right out because it says it's good on oil. So after doing a bit more cleaning to the manifold itself, I was able to get it as close to clean as I could. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, but uh, as you can see, those holes are a lot cleaner on the inside than they were before. Remember, they were cased in black sludge a second ago, or a few minutes ago, sorry. I sprayed some cleaner down here as well. A little butterfly flap, as I've heard it called, is cleaned out there. I'm hitting the inside of it with a compressor just to air dry it, make sure that it's as dry as possible in there before I go installing it. And I'm gonna get my manifold gaskets out before I go putting it on. Remember, when you're putting down your intake, there's one hole here, one hole here. I'll show you on the other side. There's one, two, three, four per connection. It's on either side, they're gonna bolt down. You have your injectors here, I re-bolted mine in right here. And then on this side right here, you can see that they are bolted down there. So the cover's missing, I'll throw it back on. It looks like Colby just rolled up, so he might be helping soon, I'd assume so. I think he's leaving for vacation tomorrow, but we'll see. So Colby is in fact here, here to help. We're gonna take these off, we're gonna land on the gaskets, which I have up there, and then you can see the eight bolts that secure it up there. Remember, four on each side, so we'll pull that. We'll throw that bad boy on top of the gaskets, line her up. Torque her down. Now my plastic air intake, you can see here it's a little bit dirty on top. I didn't really bother cleaning it too, too much since it's more important to get it on the inside and I'm kind of pressed for time, but I wiped out all the oil. You can see the residue left, a little bit of a stain right there. Not too bad over here, so I didn't clean it out all too much, but I did a little bit. I'm gonna throw that back on too. It attaches onto the back of the actual intake manifold here. So you can see that metal ring right there on the back of the actual housing. Seats onto this rubber lip right here. I'll wipe out the inside one more time with some water. Just make sure that it's good and make sure that it's dry before you go put it on. When I was cleaning that out, I was hitting it with the air compressor just to make sure that not too much of that cleaner will be left inside. So that should be good to go. I'll throw this on, get it mounted, and then I'll throw on the actual hose that goes through the air filter. Now, unfortunately, I didn't realize that this is disconnected right here. This little bracket right here screws down into that bolt hole right there and then one on the other side right there. It's kind of hard to see, but right about where this is, where I'm knocking up and down. So I'm going to have to lift up the intake a little bit, actually. I need to take that right back up where I just put it down. So if you're doing this and following along, make sure that you have that bracket in place before you put the intake back on. Otherwise, your little sensor back there will be in the way. Or not sensor, sorry, a little opening flap, whatever you want to call it. Now that I have the bracket installed, I mounted it here and here. This is nice and secure here. You can feel it's not really going anywhere. Now, there's a few little hose connections and some electrical connections that are going up and around here, but I'm not really going to hit those tonight. Not too worried about it. Might throw in a few of them just if they're going to be airlines or anything right there attached to the intake. So might throw that one in, might throw this one in actually, even though I just said I wouldn't. But I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to get this tube on here. You can see it's got this little notch right here. That notch sits right into this, so I'm going to slide that on. Tighten this clamp down. Uh, this clamp tightens with an 8mm socket or a flathead screwdriver, I believe. That is the same thing that this one tightens down with, so that's what I'm going to do there. I might throw in the electrical connections while it's open. Uh, you can see this is the main wiring harness that goes to the actual entire engine block assembly itself. And if I can find the other side while I'm aimlessly reaching around down here, the other side goes right here. Sorry, it's hooked onto the spark plug wire, but this little hole right here screws in right here, so this will hold it. This connects into here, and then this little tab slides down. I'll show you that in a second. Now, doing some more things before I route this hose in here, like I was talking about. I'm just trying to get everything out of the way. You can see I got this electrical connection up, and in here it is nice and sturdy. You'll know if you did it right like that. So I have my little clamp secured there. One big wiring harness, which is nice. I connected the little connectors down there as well. I might get some of those hoses routed up, but right here we have cylinders one and cylinder three. I have my injectors right here for cylinder one and cylinder three respectively. So I'm going to plug in where I have the connectors right here. You can see that I taped them up and marked them one and three, so I'll drop those plugs in. And then I'll probably route on the spark plug wires, uh, get the hoses in in this area, and then just get that sealed up. So I'm not as worried about the other area over here. I just want to have the air intake done by the time that I go to bed. It's 8.56 right now. I want to be in bed hopefully by 10, so we'll see how this goes. I reinstalled my cover here for my injectors, screws on with two bolts up here, one bolt here on the side, and then one straight down beneath my finger right here. I have these two, which I have yet to plug anything into, and then I have my spark plug wires, which I'm going to get connected up now. Uh, while I'm mentioning it, I also connected this air hose, goes from the back of the air box here, and then it goes down into the engine block right there. So, 
let's get those spark plugs wires wired up. I'll check my pictures for reference. I'm honestly not 100% sure which one goes here. One or three here, three or one here. I will check now and I will get right back to you. So on this side, looking for my old videos and pictures that I took along the way, looks like cylinder one is on the top, cylinder three on the bottom. So I'm going to take my first spark plug wire, kind of reach it out of here. Actually, I got my second. Let's throw three on the bottom there. And then we'll take one. We will throw her right up top. Just double checking. I have it numbered on the wires. I'll throw them into their little holsters right here. Look at that. It was like they were meant to be. Spark plug wires are in. They are routed up. They are plugged in. One on top, three on the bottom. One on the right, three on the left. Once again, I am on the passenger side. So, now that I have that up, I took this little hose. Kind of slips on right here. You see that one goes on there. Trying to push it on a little more. I might need both hands to do that, so I might have to put down my phone, which I'm using to record, and do that instead. I also connected this little gray electrical connector up here. It goes onto this white piece, which slides onto this little opening of the hose right here. You can see that it has this little area that'll slide onto this little tab right here. I'll fix them all together, and then I'll pick up the phone and start recording once more. Now that I've got everything, knock on wood, connected underneath of where this hose is going to be running, I'll finally get this hose put on. Like I said, there's that little notch right there. Latches into that little nub right there. Put them on, secure it down with this hose clamp. It secures down with an 8mm bolt or a flathead Phillips screwdriver, as you can see right there. And then I'll put it on, I'll pick up and record again. Last but certainly not least, I have my air box, which I'm going to drop back in. You see, obviously, connects to that side. That side is circular, that side is also circular. I'm going to pop it open so that it's easier to install, put it in. I'm also going to clear out the catch can down here, and you can see the old filter, which is caked up with crap inside. I'll replace that with a new one that I have and throw it in. Before throwing on the actual last piece that I was telling you about here, I decided to throw on a little mount for my oxygen sensor connections. You see this one's pulled a bit tight because the exhaust is still not 100% secured on the bottom. I'll worry about that another day. Airbox here secures on down here and then somewhere else up here. I can't remember where, but I'm going to throw that on now. Spark plugs routed and all. Wires tucked in there. Looks good to me. Part of my little bandage up for the power steering lines that started to leak again so I just wrapped them up wrapped them in some paper towels and got it all good to go but I pulled up my plug plugged in my mass airflow sensor tighten down the clamp here I put the air box back together and as you can see there's a brand new filter in there as you can see by the bright white inside uh, tank at the bottom has been cleaned out as well I'll put in the last air hosing another day because I still have stuff to access here but I'm gonna tuck everything in tonight I'm gonna throw in the alternator gonna cover that up and then I'm going to hit the sack, and I'll be back again probably Sunday because it is supposed to be raining all weekend, which is quite unfortunate except for Sunday. So Sunday I shall return, most likely, get working on this, and I hope to have it running by the end of that day. Today is Sunday, March 26th. Yesterday was Saturday, obviously, and it was unfortunately raining all day, so I didn't have any time to record. I wasn't able to get outside since we are doing the job outside, as you've been seeing, but... Hopefully things should be going good. Hopefully we'll get the engine started up by the end of the day. That's my goal, so that's what I'm going to go for. I have a few little small odd and end things to tie up, get the exhaust and engine mounts all good to go. Make sure everything's all tightened down, make sure fluids are filled up, and then get her cranked, get her turned over once we mount accessories and get the cooling system reassembled. As you might have noticed, I'm in Colby's garage right now. Colby's on vacation right now, but so that I'd be able to swing by and do some work here, so I'm just going to do that. Not really too much that I have to do here, just something quick and I'll show it to you. Now, if you watch the Lexus alternator video, that's where I got the idea to do this. You can see that I have the bolts for the exhaust right here. So this is in the middle where it couples together with the actual cross piece that goes underneath of the engine. I have the driver's side exhaust bolts right here with the studs attached to them and then the passenger side nuts. You can see that the passenger side just has the nuts. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. They're covered in oil, obviously, because the old engine was purging out oil like there was no tomorrow. But on the driver's side, you can see it pulled out the studs with it. The new block comes with studs sticking out of it already, so I don't need these studs on there, but I also can't get these nuts off. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the Lexus alternator video, which I'll link below if you haven't seen that. I'm going to put these studs in this vise right here. I'm going to get some lubrication on it, kind of clear out the threads a little bit just so it'll go through easy. Uh, clamp it down, and then I will hit it with the impact, hit it with some heat if it needs it, and hopefully drive those nuts off without a problem. Uh, middle exhaust right here, since this cross piece didn't actually come off, I'll just be able to put that back in as is. Won't be an issue, but I'll just make sure that I do it correctly with the driver and passenger side. So I'm going to throw these in the vise, I'll show you how I'm going to do it right here, and then I'll get going on that. So I have the stud and nut inside of the vise right here. You can see I have the fresh part up here that is inside of the block, and this right here. I have my big impact here today. I have a 14 millimeter socket on it, so I'm going to try to Scrub that out with a wire brush, see how much I can get that. Got a wire brush right here that I can use, and 
sort of see if I can clean off the threads and then drive it out. See if I don't need heat or if I don't need any lubricant first. If I do, I'll use it, otherwise I'll let you know how it goes. And believe it or not, without anything else besides just the impact and the vise, I was able to get it out. You see if the threads are clean inside, this will save me from having to get any new nuts. I'll set this back on the passenger side or driver's side, it looks like. Bag right here. Throw in the next one and then hopefully it'll drive out just as easy. Lo and behold, this stud is now clean and this nut came off just as easy. So here's our old studs right here and right here. Throw the nuts in the bag, then we have three nuts here, three nuts here, and then for the middle exhaust, a little coupler piece right there, we got this. So should be good to go. I'll head back over to the Subaru and get working. I don't know who's going to be able to help me today, but hopefully we'll get a good crew together. Hopefully we'll get her done. And I'm looking forward to having it on the road again. Just got back to the Forester. Let's get her cracked open. I want to get all the things on the underside done first. So I tightened down mostly everything going around the engine housing, bell housing, to the transmission itself. I want to make sure that's all tightened up and good to go just because it's going to be hard to access it once I start putting electronics on this side. I got them all on the passenger side as you can see, or as you saw in the last part of the video. So I'll pop the hood, I'll show you what I got, explain a bit more what I mean. So popping her open. As you can see what I was saying, I got pretty much all the electronics and everything, spark plugs and everything connected on that side. Engine and transmission has a good connection on that side. Over here, I just want to make sure that everything is once again connected and good to go. Starter's still sticking out a little bit, so I'll make sure that that's secured in all the way. Make sure the engine, transmission, all that's good to go. And then after I do all that, I'll hop down here. I'll make sure the exhaust is secured. Make sure it's secured front to back, both sides of the engine on the underside, securing the gaskets and all that. And then I will hop underneath, make sure that everything else is good to go. Engine mounts have not been bolted down, but they are set through right now. So I'll make sure that's all good to go. I'll show you what I'm doing, and I'll get to work. All right, Tyler's here with me now. We're going to start getting some of the hoses connected. I also forgot to mention, if you remember, I left that valve cover bolt undone right there where you can see. I got some new ones here. cost $7, so this right here is the $7 Subaru valve cover bolt. So... I'm gonna get that thrown in there. I got a couple extras just in case we need them. Hopefully it won't be seeping anywhere, but I'll screw that in. Once again, it's 12 millimeters on the end right there and I should fasten it, holding the gasket nice and tight. And from there on, we will keep on working. So spark plug wires are run once again. We got those in, starting to get some of the electrical connections down here. Tyler's gonna throw in the front supports for the radiator. I'm gonna get underneath and hit the exhaust. I can't really see the cross piece down there and I'll try to get my camera under there if I can, but I just got these little nuts and whatnot to throw in there so it's the ones that i worked with earlier and then i'll throw on the engine mounts as well i believe it is 12 millimeters or 14 millimeters for the exhaust 14 millimeters yeah i believe and then 14 for the engine mounts as well so i'll get those all in get them torqued down throw in the gaskets as well that's what the old gasket looks like the new ones are in the car right now and i'll put them in but i'll throw that underneath and hopefully be done with the underside so the exhaust cross piece is secured on up there you can see where it is bolted on right there it's two up on that side and then one in the inside and then same thing goes for the other side. I'm gonna get the engine mounts in. They're up here, it's kinda of hard to show, but you can see that stud sticking through right there. 14 millimeter bolt that goes there and then again on the other side, I'm gonna to torque both down. And then the underside work for the engine should be good. Just connected the fuel lines up here, so this is reconnected here. We sprayed in a little bit of sea foam deep creep to get in there. It's petroleum based, so it should work well with the fuel. Slid it on, clamped this down so it's nice and tight. It's not coming off anytime soon. Reconnected the last of the hoses over here. There's one underneath there. Didn't forget that one. Uh, spark plug wires are over here. Uh, two's on the top, four's on the bottom. And if you're looking at it this way, cylinder four is back here and cylinder two is right here. So they are connected here. AC compressor's right about where it's going to be going. So we got that. Connections all down here. And then on the underside, I reconnected the cross piece. We got up the exhaust and I threw on the engine mounts. So should be as simple as just throwing back in accessories, getting the coolant hoses back in. You can see my little DIY power steering job because the hoses were leaking a little bit, but I got some more fluid to top that off once it's good to go. Might throw a trash bag or something in here just to protect the intake and make sure that that doesn't get too dirty, but we're giving one last double, triple, quadruple check, whatever you want to call it, to make sure that all the AC connections are in, all the yeah, lines are over there, power steering lines are here, cooling hoses, like I said, good to go, but electrical, making sure it's good to go there. Should be good to go shortly, hopefully, ideally, I don't know, we'll see, but for the time being, we continue to work. We're going to start by getting the AC compressor on because the AC compressor has its own belt that goes in the back here. So if I remember correctly, it just bolts here, 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 and up there somewhere. So we'll get that lined up, get the bracket all secured down. I have the bolts for that in the bag over there. We'll get her knocked down. The AC compressor is mounted. We have a new belt right here, Deco belt. Slips around the back here and then runs up here controls just the AC compressor. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna to try to slide this on around the crankshaft, then rotate this around and see if it'll pull itself on. See what we can do with that. Well, 
you can see the sun's starting to go down. We got about an hour of daylight left. The uh, AC belt is finally on, and the reason that it started to get so dark is because that took us literally an hour. I checked the timestamps to get. We tried taking this out, getting it again. We tried removing just this. We tried removing the bracket. We tried just about everything. And the only way that we could get this to work is we kind of we put it on the actual compressor itself first, then we stretched it on as far as we could. We wedged the wrench in there. I took a 22 millimeter socket and cranked it and we slowly worked it around and it slowly started to bit onto here and I had to make another rotation and then slowly worked its way over here by pushing the belt. So we were able to do this with two people. I don't know how you do it as a one man job, honestly, because yeah. this took us so long. I've heard that the tools aren't great for it either. I've heard that it works for some, doesn't work for others, but we have this on. Next is either the alternator or power steering pumps. We'll get that all secured. So I got to unbandage my little, whatever you're gonna call that there and get going. <laughs> Steering pump is mounted. There's two bolts in the front and then one in the back. The longer one goes up here since you have to make up for this little depth right here. But we're going to take off the lines, try not to make a mess, and if we do make a mess, hopefully be able to clean it up with some shop towels. Throw on the lines and then get the alternator on. Should be just about good to fire up. Also got to get the coolant hoses, of course, but getting there. Steering pump is officially in. Lines are on. They're secured, clamped down here, bolted down here, so that's great. Going to throw on the alternator and then we should be just about good is installed when we had it undone we had this out we had this little arm right here and the big bolt that goes between here we had this threaded bolt out and we had this little notch piece right there out the way that we got tension on this belt was we mounted it in here kind of put this on loosely put this on and then threaded it all through but held it on loosely like i said tapped it back and forth until we could line up this piece in here screw that into the actual alternator put it in and then threaded this screw up here so it lifts the alternator up and down and then this can go up and down with it as well holds tension on it once you're good tighten it here tighten it here and tighten it here and then your belt is tighter than a guitar string so we're good to go there what we're going to do from here on out is we're going to put on the hoses then we're going to put in the radiator fans get fluids filled up and then give her a test to see if she'll start alternator is also connected up here if you didn't see we never took out this connection right here we kind of folded it over and i also plugged in the ac compressor right there so just a matter of getting things in getting where it should be make sure the new hoses are going to be good to go and then we'll get her filled up and good they're officially on we got the top one up here and we got the bottom one down there that you can see being run uh, it's just going to be a matter of getting in the battery getting in fluids and then cranking her up and seeing how she runs i uh, gonna start with putting in the battery it goes over there from where i took it out so we'll get that in maybe at least throw in a little air intake it's got the filter here but just to have a little duct up front then we should be pretty close to done installed it's starting to get a little bit dark out but we're gonna try to keep working gonna fill it with some oil gonna get some coolant in the radiator and then try to start her up see how it goes coolants in there i have the funnel in because we're gonna need to burp it as it's heating up get all the air out of there and everything make sure it's up to adequate level oil is in there not much to see there i'm gonna pu pull the fuel pump relay which sits right here i'm gonna crank it a few times three or four times get some oil cycle throughout the crankcase and then hopefully start her up and we will have zero issues knock on wood so that's what we're going for that's what I'm hoping for. Let's see what we got. Here's the part that I'm excited for, yet at the same time slightly nervous. Fuel pump is out, so it should not start, but I'm gonna give it a few cranks. Let's throw the key in the ignition. All right, go at it again. One more time. You know, once one more time for good measure. Let's put the fuse back in. Gonna prime the fuel pump. Ready? She's shaking a little, but it's running. from the video it's idling really rough i'm trying to figure out what's going on now because it is throwing many codes so I'll take a look and see what we got tucked right underneath it there we missed i'm gonna go back around clear the codes and try to fire it up again i think that was the knock sensor i'm not 100 percent sure clear them out of there 
Just heard it reset. Still working, but we'll see how it does when I try it again. Code's gonna try to start it again and see if it idles rough or idles fine. Still shaking a good bit. I'll turn it off, I'll take another look. Still looking at throttle pedal position sensor, on off for a whole bunch of these, and then you scroll down and you see the same thing there. So I'm gonna try pulling the big wiring harness again and going through and checking some individual connections once more, seeing if we got anything there. Loose connections, no codes on it now. However, it's purging out some smoke, so I'm trying to figure out what's up with that. I think it's just a matter of oil that leaked out when I was filling it, but I just wanna make sure that's not the case. I'm gonna start it up again real quick. He's running what seems to be fine now. A Little bit of smoke coming up from burning oil, but I'm gonna get everything at once over. It's making a small ticking noise. I'm gonna address that and then I'll keep moving onwards. So I was trying to figure out where all the smoke is coming from. I think it may be part of the power steering lines, which did leak out a good bit and get all over the exhaust. That would be all down in this area and explain that, but there's still a little bit of smoke coming out of over here. So I'm not 100% sure, just slowly turning it on and back off, monitoring things, making sure that coolant's all good and keeping up and making sure that all's looking good. One more fire up, let it run for a decent bit this time and see if we can notice anything dripping or burning off. Just like that, we'll let her go. We're burping the radiator a little bit, just spilled some fluid there. Still does look a bit oily down there, so we'll take a second look at that, see if we can figure that out, but other than that, it's running very smooth, which I'm happy to see. Exhaust is definitely burning off any residual crap down there, so it's slowly but surely burning away. I don't know how much further I'm gonna record since it's mainly installed and that's what the purpose of this video was, but we'll keep an eye on things, make sure that this is getting properly filled and everything and all's looking good. Smoke is just about gone. What's left of it's burning now and we can see the exhaust getting dry goes on. We leak down at the drain bowl, but we tighten that up. Gonna get the last of it. I'm not gonna record it just pieces routed up there a uh, little guards and shield hopefully everything out but i don't know if i'm going to record or not It'll be the end of the video but if thanks for watching the microphone on me so pardon the change here i'm going to take it for a quick spin these quick little driveway right here it's gonna be moving on its own there we go so it does move in my car we're going to the house and we'll drop i'll take him back and then we'll from there on out but for now let's see how it goes. the 10 back to my house has been completed a little bit doesn't seem like anything knock on wood but it all seems to be good it's running fine i have plenty of power floor it too hard since it is but that'll be the end of the video the actual end of this time uh, thanks again for watching along on my first engine hope this helps if you ever decide this yourself terrible of a job all things considered, but definitely consuming and labor intensive. Thank you, Nathaniel, for all. Uh, there's plenty more where this came from.